welcome to Irish Basketball Monthly, your chance to catch up on all that's happened in Irish basketball over the last month. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. We catch up with the Irish basketball community at this year's Super League launch. We're in Cork to check out its thriving basketball scene and take in the Neptune vs Demons game. We'll have some top coaching tips. And we'll hear from two coaches who'll be taking their teams away to compete at the ISSF Championships in Cyprus. This year's season launch took place at the arena in Tala. We caught up with Basketball Ireland's General Secretary Bernard O'Byrne, who's excited about the coming season. In the marquee events of the Super League, both men's and women, we have uh, increased clubs. We have an exciting new men's team coming into the Super League, uh, Dublin Inter, which uh, is essentially based in the Lithuanian community. So I think they'll bring excitement, uh, 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 sound uh, and a considerable skill, I would say, as well to the Super League. Uh, I think the Women's Super League will again strengthen this year. And then uh, I suppose the cream and the cake will be that we have a match in England in January for the men's Super League team to play before the English Cup final, which will be a 6,000 sellout, we're told. So that will be certainly a great event. And I think it should encourage all the players in the men's Super League to really up their performances to try and get in that squad. The addition of Dublin enter to the men's Super League this season means that for the first time in years, a team will be based at the National Arena, a development that can only help the game's growth in the capital. Well, it'll be great, and I think it is, it is essential. It is our national stadium in basketball. We haven't had a team based here for three or four years, so uh, Dublin Inter, who are essentially based in Palmerstown, will be playing here as their home venue. So I think every second Friday, uh, hopefully, the place will be rocking. And I think it also gives the opportunity, not alone to Dublin Inter, but to Basketball Ireland, to spread the word uh, around you know southwest Dublin that uh, Friday night is basketball night in the arena and we're looking forward to it. Uh, one of the interesting things in, in this year's Super League will be the introduction of a new team Inter in front of here in Dublin which is bringing people from other countries into the integration of so many people as you know basketball is an international sport and countries like Lithuania, it's the number one sport. So it's great for us to be able to not alone have our Irish communities playing, but we're trying to involve the other communities that have come here to Ireland as well. So I think whatever the group were, whatever the, the mix that came about in the early days of basketball, uh, basketball was originally introduced here in Ireland in, just after the Second World War. Uh, a lot of it came through the army and then it spread from the army into small groups. But whatever about those groups, maybe because it was such a minority sport for a long time, people all got to know each other and their families got involved. And I think that tradition has continued, even though it's expanded rapidly, uh, very much, uh, as I said, my own three of my own boys have played at Super League level. My wife is involved as a table official. I'm involved as an administrator. That kind of thing is, is, is common within the sport. And I think uh, there's a great family feel to it. If you're here at the cup finals or at, at, at basketball games, I think you'll see kids as you know, young as five and six, and yet now you'll see my generation also at the games. So there's a great family feel to it. The, some of the other groups particularly emphasize that. The Filipino community, for example, is another community that involved a lot in basketball. They build it all around families, so it's very, very important uh, at all stages, and that's one of the great things I love about the game. It is that family ethos which has been a major factor for the partnership between Basketball Ireland and Irish charity Bernardo's. Fergus Finlay, Chief Executive of Bernardo's, was on hand to explain at the launch. Well, we're really excited about it. Um, Bernardo's is an organisation that works with children and Basketball Ireland is an organisation that thrives, I think, uh, on the number of children and young people who are, uh, you know, joining new every year and who are taking part in the game. I mean, I was astonished to discover there's a quarter of a million people, the vast majority of them young, involved in basketball in Ireland. Uh, it's a tremendously exciting sport to watch, it's a tremendously participative sport for families and so on. So it's a really good mix in a way in terms of our sort of ethos because um, we love to work with families and of course our mission is to work with, with children. So we're hoping that we can put together a few uh, events uh, and fundraising opportunities obviously because fundraising is partly what this is about but the real uh, joy of it for us 
uh, is to be attached to an organisation that has such a high reputation and that's so involved with families and young people. Now you've seen them on the court, but over the coming months we'll be taking time to get to know some of the Super League's top players a little better. Here's the first of our player profiles. Jermaine Turner, Colester, Powell Ford. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In the league, Kevin Foley. Puff Summers. Oh, that's me, GQ. Ooh, Limerick. I don't cry. Soda. Genius. Chicken. <laughs> 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 it was last stuff came in my head. Chicken popped out. Uh, linguini. <laughs> <laughs> linguini? I can't have linguini, so now I'm not Italian. I can have pasta. Okay, all right. All right, we'll start again. Right. <laughs> Cabbage. Oh! Beach Volleyball, women's. <laughs> Hustle hard. Uh, my stepdad. Oh, Duncan. Throughout the year, it's not just the players we'll be hearing from. The coaches will get their turn too as they share some tips and techniques to help you improve your game. Here's the first of our series. My name is David Donnelly. I coach DCU Saints in the Men's Super League and we're here to talk about rebounding. Okay, so Stephen, we're gonna work on defensive rebounding now. I want you to throw the ball off the backboard and catch it at the top of your jump and keep the ball high. So your hands are above your elbows all the time. Keep the ball high. And when you get the rebound, I want you to pivot away from the basket Okay, and make the outlet pass to Connor. Call for the outlet pass, Connor. Okay, this is what we do on a defensive rebound. We keep the ball high and we make the outlet. Okay, let's go. That's it. Good job. Good job. Keep the ball nice and high. Good. So time your jump. Catch it at the top of your jump. That's it. Excellent. Two hands on the rebound. Very good. Okay, so Connor, will you shoot from this side? We're gonna have Steven on defense, Matt on offense here. So Connor's gonna take one dribble from the three point line. Matt, you just start out here on offense. So Steven has to come and find you as a defensive player. Once he knows the shot's gonna go up, he has to come and find you. Turn, get your body between him and the basket. And again, hands have to be above the elbows so that we are ready for the rebound straight away. There's no point in boxing out and having your hands down here and the ball comes down and you're not able to grab it. Okay, and box out, Stephen, find him, find him, grab it, good rebound, good rebound. Okay, again, we switch it up. Stephen takes one dribble, find your player, Matt, box him out. Okay, go again, if he scores, go again. Go and find your player, box him out. Okay, that's it. Box him out again. Okay, find him, Matt. That's it, go and grab it, go and get it. Fight for it. Good rebound. Okay, if you're getting the offensive rebound, okay, can you just come in and box me out here? Working on the offensive rebound, you're not allowed to come in and push the player, but it, there's a way of using your body. So if, if Connor's going to box me out, I want to come in again with my hands up above my elbows, okay, and you can move your hip into the player 
and try and use your body to leverage into the basket, okay? If your hands are up here, you're not gonna be called for a foul. You cannot push, okay, with your hands. So we, we want to keep our hands above our elbows on offense and try and get in here, okay? Use your hip and then try and out jump them for the ball. Okay, so let's try that on offense. Do the same drill, but just a little tip for the offensive player. Okay, and if you get the ball on offense like we worked on earlier, you go back up with it strong. Okay, let's go. Okay, hands up, hands up, and attack. Go and find that rebound, that's it. That's it, Matt, up strong on offense. Good rebound, good rebound. Okay, so that's it guys. In terms of our, our rebounding, like we worked on, okay, we have to have, be aggressive in terms of going for the rebounds, but the technique is have your hands above your elbows. Okay, we worked on boxing out, and when you get the defensive rebound, pivot away from the basket and make the outlet pass. On offense, we worked on keeping our hands above our elbows to catch the ball and then keep the ball up if you get the rebound and go back up strong and try and make that layup. Okay, as we said, rebounding is not about the most skillful player, it's oftentimes about the player who's willing to work the hardest. Still to come on the show, we visit Cork and get the latest on its basketball scene. There's highlights of the big derby clash between Neptune and Demons. We'll have more player profiles and coaching tips. And your chance to win an Apple iPad. Stay with us. With the big Super League derby between Neptune and Demons on in Cork, we spent the day there to get the latest on the local basketball scene. First, we caught up with Ian McLaughlin, who's running a cluster blitz for primary schools. You started your basketball, your underage basketball in the Midlands, and then you moved down to Cork. How did you find it when you moved in? Uh, I found it very good. Uh, the standard of basketball in Cork was obviously a lot stronger than it was in Athlone, so it gave me an opportunity to play at a higher level. Uh, I came down originally for college, and I've stayed down here ever since. So. And then you got into coaching. How did uh, how did that come about? Uh, I was coaching a small bit in Athlone with, with uh, the, young, the younger age, like the under nines, under tens. And then the basketball development officer's job came up and I applied for it and I was lucky enough to get it. So I get to work with kids of all ages, which, which I love. So it doesn't really feel like work to me. So in general then, what does, what does your job entail? Well, my job is I'm working for the Cox Sports Partnership as a basketball development officer. And the Sports Partnership is an, an initiative of the Irish Sports Council uh, and linked into that then is the Cork County Basketball Board, both men and ladies, and Basketball Ireland. So they all got together uh, to create this position and I'm working under the Cork Sports Partnership for Basketball Ireland and mainly the Cork County Basketball Board to develop basketball within the counties. I feel very strongly about when kids are at the optimum in age to create their motor skills as 8 to 12. That's their primary school age. They should be playing as many sports as possible. Uh, it gives them a better start and then later on in life when they hit 14, 15, 16, let them be able to make the choices of what sport they, they prefer to play at that age. The idea behind this job was to create participation as much as possible. So if you can create more participation at grassroots level, that stems the whole way up through the whole structure. So if you can get more people playing at the younger age, the drop-off level will be lower at the higher ages. And would you hope then that that would have a knock-on effect on the, the Super League and the, you know, the senior ages? Oh yes. 
uh, in terms of if we can get more kids playing at their primary school ages, hopefully we'll have more kids coming through at the, at the higher ranks. So we have more continuing to play under 12s, under 14s, under 16s, and right up to Super League level. And if they're getting the good coaching from an early age uh, in all the clubs throughout the county, hopefully it creates uh, a buzz around the county in terms of people playing at the highest standard in the country, which is what we're trying to get them to work towards this. The children have had two hours of training today and they've just put their skills into action in the game situation. It's, it's been a great run round for them and as PE is part of the school curriculum, it's great to get the opportunity to use Neptune and to put all the, the PE skills or the basketball skills into practice. The support that we get from Neptune and the Procreal Hall and Ian is just fantastic for the school. We were actually here at a blitz a few weeks ago and we received, because we came from the Cork Basketball Association, we got teaching resources, we got bibs, we received basketballs just because we came. So it's fantastic to teach in the school then, it makes it more active and more fun. And because we're here learning, we can go back and help the other teachers then to teach basketball in a fun and positive way. Now in Skull Padra Pio, we have an autistic English, which we are very proud of in our school. And there are children with autism here today actually playing basketball. And it's fantastic for those children to learn motor skills, for balance, and even to interact with the other children from the school in a social way and playing a game. And also it teaches all children the life skill of fair play and how to win and to lose in a positive way. Well, I had a great time with basketball, swimming with my friends. Uh, I learned how to shoot and balance properly. We um, did some dribbling to each other and then we passed and you had to jump in front of the person and then you had to throw the ball to it. I think it was a great day and Ian's all is, is a good coach as well. But I think it's kind of funny when uh, our, uh, the best English teacher we ever had, Miss Murphy, get shoots because it's kind of funny when she misses. I learned a new way how to shoot, how to pass uh, a good bit about blocking, how to overcome your opponent, and I really enjoyed it. I love being able to come in, they don't know who I am, I just come in, I teach them how to play basketball, have a lot of fun with the kids and they have a good time and they have a positive experience, that's all I'm trying to achieve myself and if they have a positive experience hopefully they continue to play. It's no surprise that with Cork's successful schools programmes the local game continues to grow. This is clearly evident in the ladies game which has enjoyed good success over the past few years at national level. There's a great uh, structure both at schools and clubs level and it's continuing to improve uh, over time um, and it plays a huge role in the, I suppose, the likes of Glanmire, the likes of uh, Singleton Super Value Brunel. Also you have Father Matthews have a very, very strong club at the moment as well and they're coming on well from a, from a lady's point of view but I think each club has a very good age structure. And the schools are also play a huge role in the development of underage basketball here in Cork and in women's basketball because there's huge work being done at schools level and that has proved very beneficial in recent times from a school's point of view because they've achieved a great success at, at national schools level. I think we've set the bar for other clubs to follow. Um, we've had a very good underage structure for many, many years. We've had great work done from our, our, our former chairman and former president of Basketball Ireland. Tim Murphy had put a good underage structure, a lot of very good people in our club in Glanmire. And uh, it's reaping the benefits really because we've enjoyed great success from under 12 to uh, under 20 level. I mean, we've in, over the years we've won uh, national cups at uh, under 18 and under 20. And uh, we also won uh, national titles at under 14, and I think that has set the bar for other clubs to follow. Uh, and you know, the likes of the Brunels, the Father Matthews, you know, and other t teams within the Cork City and County. The type of game, though, that's played in Cork is quite intense, and would you find that that has affected the rest of the, the country? Well, I mean, there's a huge intensity in the Cork game, and there's great fitness levels uh, at, at, at the particular game as well, and I think that has. Uh, you know, give it a great impetus to Cork basketball in general, Cork women's basketball in general. And, you know, um, a lot of clubs have enjoyed great underage success. And I think that's really due to the intensity and the, uh, you know, the, the, the peak, I think, at the right times from, uh, from a club or school point of view. You see, all the kids in Brunel Super League actually came through the ranking, started off at the nursery and came right through the whole ranking. And that's a big inspiration for the younger kids to stick by their home, home shoots and hopefully get a few results at the end of the game.
the ladies is picking up a big time. It was kind of went through a lull for a long time, but now it's back up. It's a big popularity in the north side, especially with uh, with Brunel Basketball and Glamour, our big rivalries, same as Blue Leams and Neptune here. But the girls' side is getting to it. Rosanne, over the years, how has the promotion of ladies' basketball in Cork changed the game? Well, at the start, the Nieko was our main promotion, way of promoting basketball in, in, in Cork. But uh, with the internet now, we have our own website. Clubs have their own website. We have Facebook pages. And as well as that, then you can get in touch with clubs much easier with email and everything. So the internet's been nearly a lifesaver for promotion of basketball in Cork. Basketball in Cork has gone from strength to strength. The numbers have exploded, as we'll see here in Father Matthew's club. They currently boast players of 27 different nationalities. At the beginning, I'd say we had maybe 10 within a very sharp period, and then it exploded maybe about five years ago. There was kids came from every quarter. And the, the, I suppose the, the whole idea of having kids from other cultures is very important to me at a lot of levels. But it opens up the kids that we have, our, that would be our own children, to different experiences and different cultures, and that's important. It's all about a learning culture here, so we, we think it's very important. And we, we've embraced it, and we're very lucky that the communities in the area have embraced Father Matthews as well. And what we find with a lot of non-national kids is that their parents have an experience of basketball, whereas Irish parents wouldn't have on the whole. They, they might have an interest in the J or soccer. So we found that those people have been willing to help out at the academies or training kids or taking teams or helping out along with the Irish parents. So it's been a huge plus for Father Matthews having these people come into the club because now they're bringing expertise that we lacked because, as I say, there hasn't been a huge tradition of basketball in the area. But Father Matthews was based on the south side of the city and traditionally there'd been very little underage basketball played on the south side of the city. And about 10 years ago, there was a couple of us decided to try rejuvenate juvenile basketball and Father Matthews was founded with one team with maybe seven players at the time, a boys club. And I suppose it's grown over the last 10 years and this season it looks like we'll have 26 teams across all age groups, boys and girls, including a wheelchair team for the first time. Basically there was a team already established in Cork, uh, basically a bunch of guys coming together, uh, training under the IWA, Irish Wheelchair Association. And basically they came to Father Matthews to see if we could merge our club with their club. And the proposal came to the committee. And then we just basically, we got the green light to go. So then we, they come on board under the Father Matthews banners. And basically we'll be, this is our first season under the banner of Father Matthews. And the first game will literally take, happen in three weeks time. But we've been training for, for the last season and a half, um, every Tuesday night for two hours. Uh, that's basically how we, how we came together. The numbers in wheelchair basketball wouldn't be very high as other basketball. Um, so there's a lot of asking players to come um, within the, the Munster area. Uh, we have players coming from Kilkenny and Limerick and as far away as Bantry to train with us. Um, so the commitment is there, but we're actually seeking to get numbers up, uh, basically bringing a higher awareness of what we do in Florida Matthews through the wheelchair club or the wheelchair team. So basically people come and know that we actually have a wheelchair team based in Cork. Uh, I suppose under the umbrella of Matthews, a lot of people will know that. So, our base of ambition going forward is to bring a higher, bigger awareness of wheelchair basketball in Cork, in Munster, and indeed in the country. Francis, what was it like growing and developing a club outside the city in Ballincollig and then competing with traditional teams like Neptune and Demons? Um, initially, it was exciting, very exciting. Um, the fact that I grew up in the north side of Cork City. I knew the basketball, spent a lot of my youth and a lot of my years in the parochial hall and have, spent since, and I have since spent a lot of time there. I knew the traditions here. Um, it was probably giving the boys the confidence coming from a, a satellite town um, that they belonged and that they could play against people who wore a Neptune in the Blue Demons jerseys. I must say in the early years, both those clubs, the strongholds of uh, Cork basketball were very helpful and very friendly and encouraging towards us. Um, when we did start to become as good as them, we were then treated as competitors and all that that brings. But it, you know, the tradition is there in Cork basketball, so it's been a challenge. We have a big community, we have a large population of Alancolic. You know, I don't think we have no excuses not to, to produce some good basketball players, and we have good athletes. We um, have two very good secondary schools, a number of primary schools, both secondary schools play basketball, so they feed into our club and 
There's a two-way street there where we give them kids back into there. And both schools have been terribly successful over the years, both boys and girls. So it's been an interesting couple of years. A very enjoyable couple of years, but it's been good. Still to come on Irish Basketball Monthly. Highlights of the Neptunes and Demons Derby Clash. More player profiles and coaching tips. We hear from the coaches who will be taking their school teams to compete in Cyprus. And your chance to win an Apple iPad. Stay with us. Welcome back to Irish Basketball Monthly. Now before the big derby between Neptunes and Demons, I met Jim Deneen and Tony O'Connell, two men who are very familiar with the history of this clash and Cork's very famous basketball scene. Jim, you were involved in basketball in its early days before the foundations were laid by yourself and others. What were those days like? It was mainly played in the, in the schools at that time, there wasn't any real uh, juvenile basketball clubs. Uh, Blanishry, CBS, North Monastery were there and um, we say Blackpool National School, St. Francis School in, in the centre of the city. That's the way the, uh, the game evolved back in the late 50s. I got involved originally about 79, 80 and it was the start of the, the, the recession that I would remember and it was a great outlet for people who were unemployed. Uh, basketball was predominantly north side of the city and the demographics it was working class area so you had a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands and um, the simple opening of the parochial hall in the north side of the city open to anyone meant that people had a place to go a uh, sense of purpose it kept kids on the straight and narrow so literally it was the recession in the 80s that really helped basketball take off um, from an underage point of view we had access to any among the adults because they were unemployed or they were working basic shift patterns. Now it's great to see you talking and sitting down beside each other but it mightn't be doing the same later on. We're here for the big game between uh, UCC Demons and Neptune. Now tell us about the rivalry. Neptune were formed way back in the 40s. We uh, came out of the Paul Boys Club which was formed in 59 and we started the senior section in 66. And you know we won our first big senior trophy in 67 and we beat Neptune that year and um, we've been hammering at one another ever since. Tony, what can we expect then from a, from a derby game like this? Like, what's it going to be like tonight? Well, I, I turn it on and said it's the unexpected. Um, you could have a hero from either team step up who would normally deliver. You could have the expected heroes fail to deliver. Um, it could come down to a simple call, a good call or a bad call, fouls and injuries, so anything can be expected. But it is a game that will be levelled, fairly level. It's a level playing field, irrespective of the records coming in where Deems are 2-0 and zero and we're 0-2. and two. Um, it'll, I expect it to be very, very close. Not to be all end all the season, not to be all end all of the clubs, but there are bragging rights involved here. Very good, closely contested contest this so far at the Neptune Stadium. Taken up by Shane Duggan, four points to his name so far. Demons who used to operate under the colours of blue, but that's Neptune's domain now. UCC Demons in the red, but it's very much Neptune trying to get some dominance back into this contest. Wonderful play by Darren Towns. Draws the foul. Neptune leading at the end of the first and second quarters, 15-12 and 36-20 respectively. Towns has missed the first up. Having scored his most recent attempt from the free throw line. Neptune still two away. Played US college basketball at Hofstra University in New York. He is a Manhattan boy. He's got that one. It's a one point game. Towns. Got inside the paint out towards him. McLaughlin and that is a wonderful, wonderful three point play. Neptune in the lead near the end, 
It's four points without reply. Niall O'Reilly recovered quickly, four points so far in the contest. This is Carlton Cuff, who's got 18, and a quick layoff for Shane Duggan. 61 apiece. Thought about the three-point, back towards Gary Walsh, former captain of the Irish under-18s, inside towards Joe Noonan. Rebound opportunity fell for Darren Towns, but not his way. Claimed by Delwan Graham. Demons moving it up again. Gathered by Carlton Cuff. Had a really good go there. Cuff now up to 20 points. And Demons lead again. 63 to 61 with five and a half minutes to go. Gary Walsh taking it easy. And it was a good long tie by Darren Towns, but not good enough. Shane Duggan gathering the rebound away from Delwan Graham. And Demons with a chance to move it up again and maybe increase their lead here, but a very good turnover. Darren Towns moves it up. This is Ian McLaughlin, and we are all square again. McLaughlin, the basketball development officer in Cork, and Mike just have picked up a knock here as well, has tied it up at 63 apiece right at the death. But it is Del Juan Graham, 28 to his name now, and Demons lead again in what's turning out to be a really scintillating encounter. So reminiscent of the great meetings here in times past at the Neptune Stadium. Full houses back then. Certainly full house in terms of scoring here. Gary Walsh just missed that one. Graham again with the rebound. Doing well in both halves of the court. Picked up by Shane Cole the captain. Out wide for Shane Duggan. Worthy three-point try, but no good this time. Ian McLaughlin gets the rebound. Gary Walsh moving it on. Whoever will win this game will have done it in feverish and very, very tight fashion. And that was almost the lead again for Neptune. The effort for me, McLaughlin rebounding out. Demons hanging on by two for now. Call it. Has support just outside from Carlton Cuff, who looked at the long one and got it. Marvellous three-point score from Carlton Cuff. And suddenly it's a five-point lead for the Demons. Member of the Irish under-20 team that was so successful in the Euros in 2007. And at the moment it's Demons who are being most successful here. 68 plays 63, three minutes remaining. And the foul called. Back for Darren Towns. Gary Walsh back in again. Good work by Ian McLaughlin, but no good this time. It didn't drop. Carlton Cuff, everything's going Demon's way right now. Moving it on with Shane calling the captain. Time for Niall O'Reilly just to take a slight breather, run the clock down a few more seconds. Good ball inside. Carlton Cuff again. 25 points are here now. It's a seven-point lead for Demon's. And Neptune, who held strong advantages at the end of the first two quarters. They were four points down heading into the final quarter. 55-51 was the Demons' lead. But now it's an advantage of seven, which has been cut down. Five-point game again. Very important score. McLaughlin makes his way up to 18 points. But Demons still have all the cards here, and they lead by five. Foul on Carlton Cuff. Still only a five-point margin with two and a half minutes to go. And Niall O'Reilly upended. And the foul going against Darren Cronin. The real displeasure of Michael McGain is right throughout Neptune now as Shane Duggan gets another two points. He's up to eight. And Demons lead by 72 to 65. It's going the men in red way now. Towns, too quickly back. 24 points a hit. 67 72. At one stage, a seven point lead. Still five at this late stage. Well, it's not insurmountable, but it's very impressive. 
The one Graham about to shoot but was robbed so wonderfully. Chance for another push up by McLaughlin. 18 points to his name so far. Long attempt by Walsh. Never really looked as if it was going to be a successful three point play. 87 seconds to go. Long one by Ian McLaughlin. Another try. It's a wonderful score for three by Gary Walsh. Six points. He scored now. And the Demons lead as a slender two. And Neptune of the chance to snatch it away. It's with Towns and he's tied it up. 26 for him and it's all square inside the final minute. What a fight back this is by Neptune. Shane Collin trying to work it on. Back for Carlton Cuff. Took his time. It's a long try for three. Off the rim. Rebound falls for Darren Towns. Jerry Noonan to take his time inside the final 30 seconds. Well, Neptune in the first three quarters ran it off with a three-pointer each time. They would take that now. McGinn. Short for Jerry Noonan. Inside the paint. Went for the two. Missed it. Gathered by Shane Collin. Out towards Niall O'Reilly. O'Reilly bring it on. That's a great score. Two-point lead for Demons. Niall O'Reilly has pulled it off. Four seconds to go. Neptune would definitely take a three-pointer now. It would win it for them. But they won't take it. It's gathered by Colin. They'll run down the clock. And Demons have pulled off victory in a brilliant Cork derby. 74 points to 72. That was tremendous high-octane stuff. Shane, first of all, congratulations. How does it feel to come away with the win out there? Thanks a million. Yeah, it was a hard fought match. Um, absolutely thrilled to have won the game. Uh, we knew coming in that Neptune were after losing their first two, but they were close games by all accounts, and we knew they'd be up for a battle. They're on the home court, and we're just delighted to snuck it in the end. I mean, with a minute and a half to left, we were five up. You know, they hit some big shots and got it back level, but thankfully, Niall Riley got a winning score. And, we got a steal at the end, so they got no shot off. So as a team, we're delighted to win. This derby splits a lot of families. You know, you've got team supporters and Neptune supporters. It's such a small basketball community in Cork. But um, it's always nice to play in front of a big crowd, and it's not nice to lose in front of a big crowd. A lot of us would have played against each other since we were six or seven through the underage ranks. Some of my best friends are Demons players. So it's always hard when you lose afterwards. But um, it's good, it's good. It, whatever happens on the court kind of stays there. So it's good to have a bit of age and a bit of rivalry. Still to come after the break, we hear from two coaches who will be taking their school teams away to compete at the ISSF Championships in Cyprus. We see how the coaches get on with their basket shots. And your chance to win an Apple iPad. Now having won schools all Ireland in the past two years, the girls from St Vincent's and the boys from St Malachy's will be heading to the ISSF Championships. We met up with their coaches Dami Mullins and Adrian Fulton to find out how preparations have been going for Cyprus. It's the under 17 tournament and, and right now we're operating under 16, under 18 competitions here so the, the team is working uh, as to with three boys who are under 18s and the rest are under, under 16 so uh, we're going to try and get those guys more together on a basketball situation after Christmas but they're working out together with their own teams um, they're doing strength and conditioning work which they haven't done before 
flexibility worked. So um, yeah, I mean they're, they're, they've hit the ground running. They're playing well at the minute, um, but it's just a case of uh, of the last sort of four months after Christmas when when our own sort of competitions in Ireland are done, because um, we've got to deal with those as well. That, that we get together and we work towards the, sort of those four months after Christmas. At the moment, one, one was passed that we were going. The kids went away straight, straight off fundraising themselves, but the parents have coming come to school now, set up a com committee there, and, and they're already fundraising. But we're going to be sponsored if we can, which will cover a lot of it. You now, the school, the school up there, our head, our head members, the Don Gobrain, this has rolled in totally behind us, and, and the, all, all the school teachers. So. We hope we get there. There's certain countries that we really would have struggled to deal with, um, you know, Greece, Germany, um, Turkey, real European powerhouses. Um, but certainly the, the smaller nations like Holland, Belgium, more like ourselves, we are, uh, we're more than capable of, of hanging with those teams. They actually get this to play at a very, very higher level. There's scouts out there who are scouting for scholarships to America, which is a huge thing, a, a lot of them out there. Right? So a, a lot of kids go out, and that's their ambition, is to get to America. And it's, you know, it's just a, a, a huge challenge out there because, you're, as I said, you're playing against all the top teams in the whole world. I think that our boys will be, will be a little bit surprised, a little bit shocked, which is good. And I think some of our expectations aren't just built around about winning games. It's, you know, those nations that, that are playing at a different level to us, that their leagues are fully professional that our boys will get a chance to see what it's like to play against, against boys who, for the top teams, will already be professional, professional basketball players. Mark Engel, DCU Mercy. Hi, Mark Keane and coach UL Eagles men's basketball. God damn it. <laughs> James Weldon, UL Basketball Club. No, oh, it's not rain. <laughs> Paul Kelleher, UCC Demons. Got the Justin done. <laughs> Adrian Fulton, Belfast Star. What's the light of the black? Second black line? That's in! It's time now for our second coaching tip of the show. I'm Mark Keenan, head coach of the UL Eagles men's basketball team uh, playing in the Super League and today I'm going to be talking about shooting. Every, every basketball player when, when they begin uh, playing the game have, have been taught about the triple threat position. Triple threat position is when a player catches the ball in offence he squares up to the basket and he's in a triple threat position, ready to pass, shoot and dribble. Now Connor will, will demonstrate this when I pass him the ball. He gets down, he's on balance, nice footwork, good hand action. He's ready to shoot the ball, he's ready to pass the ball, he's ready to dribble the ball. All right? But the important thing that he's on balance, not easily pushed over and he's in his shooting action, ready to go. All right. The shooting action uh, should be a continuous motion from knees bent all the way up to releasing the ball. All right. Connor's down in his shooting action, brings his elbow up. Elbow, knee, hand, ball, shoulders, all facing the basket. That's a perfect shooting action here that we can see from Connor. The last bit then is the release of the ball the ball gently rolls off your hand. You're not pushing the ball, you're not throwing it, you're rolling it off your fingers. Nice backspin. Let's see it. Bang. Nice rotation on the ball. All right, he's shooting the ball up in the air so it falls down as opposed to shooting at the basket. Okay, if you went to the gym on your own, just yourself and your basketball, here's a couple of, couple of things that you can work on to help your shooting action footwork Okay, 
Connor has the ball. He throws it out for himself as if he's going to receive a pass. Square up to the basket, ready to shoot the ball. All right, so let's, let's demonstrate a couple, couple of shots of that. S step inside foot, square up, shoot the basketball. You're going in the other direction, okay? It's your opposite foot. Again, throws the ball, square, plants his inside foot, squares up to the basket, bang, releases his shot. Let's see it once more. Step, square up, on balance, nice and low. Shooters can't be straight up, right, when they catch the ball, right? It takes time then to get down and come back up to get your shot away. You need to be down on balance when you catch the ball, so it's catch and shoot. If you have two players go to the gym and they want to work out themselves, we have a point guard up here and we have a wing player here. One of, the, one of the ways of getting your shot in the game is off penetration, all right? Guy penetrates to the basket with a basketball and the defense drop off the shooter to help. He gets to a shooting spot. We find him nice and open, all right, to release that shot. If I'm defending Connor and I see the penetration here and I come to help, he's wide open, bang, ready to catch and shoot. All right, penetration works the opposite way for the guard. Wing penetration, I'm guarding the point guard, I come to help, he steps in on balance, ready to catch and shoot. Okay, let's put it here again. Attack the basket, I come to help, good pass, ready to catch and shoot. Nice shot. We bring a third player in, all right, three guys go to the gym and they're working together. Back to the wing. All right, Matt, you're gonna defend the shooter. You're going to help on penetration, and then you're going to recover to try and put some pressure on the shot. Now we're advancing to where we have a defender trying to put some pressure on the shooter. All right, his technique stays the same. He's gotta be focused on the basket, not on the defender coming running at him. Penetrate, help, move to a new spot. We make it difficult for the defense to recover and help. Okay, Matt, defend the point, and we look at that from the wing. Penetrate, defense comes to help, recover, challenge the shot, nice action. You, you notice that the shooter's action hasn't changed the fact that we have put some defense in. You gotta be focused on your own technique, and not change it, just the fact that there's somebody running at you or a defender running at you. Okay, that's our shooting tips for today, and I hope you got something out of it. Thank you. Now it's time for another player profile. Megan Hoffman, you see you mercy? Forward post. Larry Bird. <laughs> Probably my own. Got a Blackberry, want an iPhone. Uh, I love Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I don't cry for movies. Ooh, Colorado. Uh, definitely my iPod for music. Um, Probably something to write with, and maybe a nice bottle of wine. Mexican. Ah, I, I listen to depressing music, so <laughs> it actually is the opposite of pumping up music, so any of that, yeah. Uh, my parents. Philippa, your company Nivea are partnered with Basketball Ireland. Tell us a little bit about the association. Well, Nivea for Men has been partnered with Basketball Ireland for the best part of a decade now, and Nivea, the female brand, came on in the last couple of years as well. And we've had a fantastic relationship with Basketball Ireland, um, which is fantastic mutual benefits for both associations. The great thing about basketball as well, that it is very much 
a sport that anybody can do. You don't have to be a particular kind of person to be doing it. And it's great to have that kind of synergy with the two associations that you can see that link up with the brands. Um, basketball is a very open, welcoming kind of community and Nivea and Nivea for Men is very much the same kind of ethos. So we really like the partnership. And you've got a big prize to give away? We do. We've got an Apple iPad and all you have to do is go onto the Basketball Island Facebook page, like their page and there will be a draw on the 30th of November and one lucky person will be the winner of an Apple iPad. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. To be in with the chance to win an iPad, like Basketball Ireland's Facebook page by November 30th. For all the latest information from Super League to schools basketball and everything in between, make sure to bookmark Basketball Ireland's website www.basketballireland.ie your go-to guide for the season. For the chance to win exclusive prizes throughout the season while getting the latest news from basketball around the country, remember to follow the official Basketball Ireland Twitter account at bballirl and like the Facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash bbireland. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Irish Basketball Monthly. Make sure to tune in again next month.